Hello and welcome to May's plenary session in Strasbourg. Well, it's quite an extraordinary weekend in London. On Friday, after the arrest, detention, conviction and imprisonment of Tommy Robinson, within 24 hours, thousands of people gathered outside Downing Street and later outside Parliament to hear speeches from various supporters, including me, who gave them the call to action to demonstrate against this act of political imprisonment by the British state, headed up by Theresa May's so-called Conservative government. The demonstrations continued at Speaker's Corner the following day, where Veterans Against Terror and other patriotic freedom of speech and anti-Jihadi terror groups called for Tommy's release. More are planned this coming weekend, one in Manchester, which is be being called by the Veterans Against Terrorism and the Democratic Football Lads Alliance. The mainstream media and the government condemn us as far right. Yeah, because we stand up for the rights of our children against sexual abuse, female genital mutilation, forced marriage, Sharia law, and expose the dangerous jihadis in our midst, we are labelled as far right. Why? Because we are a threat to Davos man, the global elite, the status quo, and this place, the European Union. When our governments protect the rights of minorities who are undermining our culture, our hard-won freedoms, and use the police and judiciary against the majority, our system has failed. Democracy is no more, it is the tyranny of the state. We will not be silenced. Across Europe we are seeing a rejection of totalitarianism. Whether it's against the UK government, Brussels or the illiberal left, the people are revolting. We will win. We have to, for Tommy's sake and for our children's future. Free Tommy Robinson now. Well, welcome to May's session of Strasbourg and the ENF MENL Make Europe Great Again TV. Joining me today, I have Gerolf Annemans, Vice President of the ENF and um, MEP for the Vlamsbelang, and also Marcus Pretzel, Vice President of the ENF and founder of the Blue Party for Germany. Welcome, gentlemen. We're going to, we're going to talk about two subjects today. We're going to talk about the curious case and free, freedom of speech case of Tommy Robinson, and also what is going on in Italy. Well, over the weekend, on Friday, a freedom fighter Tommy Robinson was arrested, jailed, convicted, without access to his lawyer. Within five hours, he was put in prison. There was a media gagging order across the world, and the mainstream media didn't report it. Luckily, we knew what was going on because um, it, was, it was reported on mainstream media, uh, on, on sorry. social media. On social media. <laughs> It was reported on social media. So we had, we had an angle of what went on. Within 24 hours, we had hundreds, probably a couple of thousand people demonstrating in Downing Street. One of, I, I was one of the people that uh, called for that demonstration. There were quite ugly scenes at times um, outside the gates of Downing Street because of the, the absolute anger. And what it's done, this Tommy case, has tapped into something. It's a sort of zeitgeist of our times, really, that people are very, very angry that their freedom of speech is being shut down. And Tommy personifies this. We've got a, a group called Veterans for Britain, we've got the Football Lads Alliance, and they can tap into hundreds of thousands of people. And I know across the world, Tommy has been called for his release. So from Austria to uh, the Netherlands, Geert Wilders has spoken very strongly in favor of Tommy. In Germany and Australia, he's been offered political asylum. And this has gone viral in the US and Canada as well. And luckily yesterday, the media ban uh, for reporting on the Tommy case was lifted, but the actual case we can't speak about. But I suppose rather than um, talking about the Tommy case specifically, do you think it's symptomatic of what's actually happening in this place? Are you shocked at what's happening in the, um, in the UK, which used to be a bastion of free speech and, and liberty and freedom? And Gerald, what, what's your take on this? You've had experience of it. Yes, exactly. We, we as Flams Belang, former party with Flams Block, we were convicted for so-called racism. Uh, after five changes of laws and two changes of the constitution, they set, uh, 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 they made a setting in which they could convict us of racism and could put the label criminal organization on the party. So we had to found a new party. Uh, I'm, I'm just telling this because um, somehow the regime, what we call the regime, um, being the artificial 
governing of the Western European countries uh, in the last 20 years um, had a symbol in the very artificial state Belgium. Uh, an artificial state, whether it is Belgium or the European Union, cannot, be del ca cannot deal with uh, democracy and cannot be governed with democracy or with clear uh, freedom of speech, openness and democracy. It should always be corrected somehow in a in a penal way or in a, a violent way. Mm -hmm. And so uh, where we would have the feeling that with uh, Robinson they crossed the red line, putting someone in jail for openly wanting to voice his criticism on Muslim mi migration, uh, we see that it is a part of a general picture in the whole of Western Europe Sadly, of course, now in, uh, in Great Britain and in the United Kingdom, where we always thought uh, freedom of speech would be an absolute uh, uh, value that would be respected by the regime. No, on the contrary, regimes like the one who are governing, governing our, us now, they cannot clearly be democracies. And that's what we see now. Mm. Yeah, well, that's the Flemish point of view. What, what do you see from the German perspective, Marcus? Well, from a German perspective, uh, the UK has always been the country of free speech, of greater freedom. Um, we always thought that in the UK there, there was a, a culture of freedom. Uh, people were, were longing for freedom. Uh, this is where we, in Germany, learned democracy and free speech from. Um, and now we see that free speech speech is taken away from, from the citizens in the UK. And this is an alarm signal, really. Um, this is really frightening for me because I, I always thought that the UK would be the last country where this could happen. Um, I couldn't have thought of an incident like this 10 years ago in the UK. I could have thought of, the, uh, of an incident like this in Germany, in France, in Spain, in Italy, almost everywhere in the world but not in the UK. So um, this is frightening because the symbol of free speech um, is taken away. Um, and um, it, it's, it's not so much about Tommy Robinson himself. This is, um, he's just one case out of many incidents during the last month in the UK. Um, you can't report on a case. You, if you report on a case, you're taken to jail and nobody else can report on your case. Um, it's a ridiculous uh, chain of, of, um, of um, forbidden um, things uh, that we experience these days. Um, and yeah, it, it's almost impossible um, to even uh, explain to the public what is the source of this Tommy Robinson incident? Yeah, and, and that's the point now. Um, especially with social media, you just can't shut down this and slapping a D notice on, on um, as the government did. And it's a very dangerous situation where you have the government controlling the police and the judiciary and saying you will be our weapons against free speech. And that's what people don't understand because this stuff goes viral on social media and we could just direct thousands of people to Downing Street. Next Saturday there's another march up in Manchester in the north of England which has been organised for the Veterans Against um, Terrorism and also the Democratic Football Lads Alliance. These people are tapping into hundreds of thousands of people and it's, it's almost like Brexit and it's what's happened in Italy and Germany and across our countries whereas this quiet what was, what was very quiet and underground rejection of, of, of totalitarianism, which goes on in this place, which goes on in our parliaments, and you see this quiet revolution going on. It's quite interesting and it's, um, it's frightening at the same time, but I think, actually, you know, we might just win. Anyway, guys. Be prudent because we, uh, only last week we received uh, here in our commission, commissions or in a committee, a uh, small sala, uh, we, uh, we had uh, uh, the joy to meet uh, Zuckerberg, yes. where we as ENF group introduced the subject of uh, uh, not only the, tr 
the way social media try to hide certain subjects, but where there is a real censorship on uh, mm -hmm. on what is uh, distributed on on social media. So talk with two words and be very prudent about social media uh, because even they are not uh, an ent entirely free uh, free space anymore. No, they're not because they have been targeted um, by the European Union and mm -hmm. legislation will come in. But all the time, new platforms are springing up. We're not going to have to just rely on Facebook, no. who shut down a few friends of mine last week. Luckily, they've got the platform again. I've, I met very, very nice young people dedicated to freedom of speech who I met on Saturday in Whitehall and they had been kicked off Twitter, um, just for saying something quite mm -hmm. innocuous. It started with Madame Merkel uh, in Germany, mm. who uh, set up laws that severely uh, attacked Facebook and others with mm. penalties I have never heard of, as high as they are. Mm. So mm. We're, we're, we're not safe even there. No, well, hopefully Mrs Merkel's days are numbered. OK. Right, moving on to Italy. I'm working on that. <laughs> you certainly are, and I saw some demonstrations at the weekend in Germany, and good luck to them. Um, moving on to Italy, obviously our friend and vice president, uh, or former vice president of the ENF and, and our group, Matteo Salvini. We all wanted him to become prime minister, um, then he was nominated as interior minister, and then over the weekend, Mattarella, who is a socialist president, unelected, decided that he would not allow Matteo and his partners in the Five Star Movement to form a government. Instead, they've appointed um, an EMF, an IMF, um, dictator to run the country until people can vote the right way. And then yesterday we saw the commissioner Ottinger said the Italians will vote the right way because the markets will tell them to do this. Within minutes this tweet was taken down but luckily we can actually grab this and then he was backtracking. But isn't that just symptomatic of what we were saying before about freedom of speech and what people think and feel and worry about? And they voted in Matteo and he's friends of Five Star Movement. Let's see what happens in September. But, you know, there is this quiet revolution going on. I mean, what, what, what are your thoughts on um, Italy at the moment, Marcus? Well, first of all, um, we're happy that our political enemies, like uh, Gunther Oettinger, um, somehow are not smart enough uh, to lie all the time. Sometimes <laughs> they're honest. Um, and. Mm. Um, <laughs> happy that's we should be happy they are sometimes at least um but um no italy italy is a is a strange case as well we have seen um that the italian president um who is who's his his, his uh his duty is um to set in place a government which has a majority uh in, in both the Senate and the Parliament. He's, by the Italian uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, constitution, not allowed uh, to pick the government by himself mm. and to decide mm. whether a minister is a good minister or a bad minister for the country. That is the decision of those who are set in place by their mm -hmm. voters. And um, the minister uh, that is rejected by Mr. Mattarella was a minister in Italy before. Mm -hmm. He was a minister in 93 to 94. He was industry minister. And now this minister has made up his mind, changed his views on the euro. He is one of those who was responsible to install the euro in Italy. So he knows what he's talking about. And now since he's made up his mind and changed it, it's impossible for him to be a minister in Italy. That he's been before and he's done a good job. Nobody ever complained before. But now Mr. Mattarella knows this guy can't be a minister, a representative of the Italian people. This is a scandal. This is a huge scandal and uh, there's in, in, in Germany, we, we see the media, they are so happy about what Mattarella did. Uh, they think he's, he's brave. Um, he's so brave, he didn't even respect the democratic vote 
of the Italian people. Yeah, and, sad, and, that, that, sad and that, 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 that sums it up. And what we've seen over the past few days is a huge surge of Italian voters now going to our friends in the Five Star Movement well, and also saw, our saw, better saw. friends in the, in, in the saw, league. I saw an article this morning in the Wall Street Journal uh, uh, entitling, uh, and the title was uh, The Winner is Salvini. Anyhow, mm, whatever happens. Um, Italy is um, one of the several signs where we see, I, I was speaking about Belgium being an artificial state, <laughs> the European Union is an artificial state also, ignoring the signs. And the bills are coming in, what the first or the most, most spectacular bill was of course the Brexit, Brexit yeah. uh, but they ignored it and they went into their direction yeah. ignoring the sign of the Brexit. You would have expected that all of a sudden here in this house they the could, the could fall down some wise uh, mm -hmm. decision to see okay Brexit how are we going to uh, slow down a bit because the sign is clear we should so slow down the country happened uh, they, they yeah. went faster than ever in the same direction uh, and the next bill that is coming in now is actually Italy it is impossible to keep the euro stable without uh, excluding democracy in Italy. Italy is a special economic case. They always knew it was a special economic case, that Italians had a special way of dealing with their economy. But their, in their own way, they dealt with mm. their economy. Mm. Mm. And the euro uh, forbid to deal with their economy their way. And that is, this, that is the meaning of the euro, is stop being yourself. And uh, Italy and the Italian economy is going to challenge that idea. So if uh, the European Union um, lived after Brexit, it will not live after Italy. Mm. And being um, shackled by the euro in this place, so what effectively that means is that if a disaster happens in Italy, like a, an earthquake or an avalanche, or um, they need more money for their disabled, they have to come with a begging bowl to this place and that's totally unacceptable. Well, it's not only a thing, thing of the thing of the begging bowl, it's actually can they govern their economy their way? Mm. We can uh, say it is not a German way. Of course it is not a German way or a Flemish way to deal with economy, but it's their way. Uh, only the euro forbids to deal with things their way. Mm -hmm. They can't mm -hmm. evaluate their, their currency, they can't uh, flexibly uh, uh, take part in the European mm -hmm. economic economy. The idea that we have one currency obliges us to say that we are all going to become Germans. And that will not happen, not with Italians, not with Greeks, not with Spanish. Mm -hmm. And that is the, the, the artificial idea that has been uh, religiously uh, uh, cherished here and that should fall now with uh, what is happening in Italy. Yeah, I think the whole foundations to this place is under threat. In September we have the Swedish elections where our friends the Swedish Democrats may become the largest party. We've got the European elections next year where we can see um, our friends near Dexia possibly getting quite a number of, of MEPs, very Eurosceptic, wants to come out of the Euro. Um, we see what's happening in here with Poland and Hungary. And there you've got the what, two, two of the top five economies, Britain and Italy, that has shaken this place to its core roots. It's, um, it's interesting times. Well, no doubt. Tommy Robinson, if you're watching this, we support you. Across the ENF group, across Flanders, across Germany, and as you know, you've had masses of support here. We wish you well. We're trying our hardest to get you out of prison. Free Tommy Robinson. <laughs>